are here with season two, Lexi. Ah, I can't believe we're already here. I know. I know. In some ways it feels like um, it was just yesterday that we wrapped yeah. up season mm-hmm. one, but in other ways it feels like it was decades ago because... Yeah, and whenever we had to like reach for our microphones again and get back into this, we're like, okay, how do we do this again? But <laughs> after one episode, we were like, okay, we got this. Let's just yeah. keep going. Yes. I mean, it's just, that's the best part. It's just so much mm-hmm. fun talking to everyone and... Um, yeah, the season but, people made us cry because uh, it was so oh, good. Of course. Well, yeah. So, yeah, yeah no, even you, tissues. though. You're not, and you're not a yeah. crier. I am not I'm a crier. A, I am a weller upper. I will yep. well up at the smallest thing, but you are not a crier right. anyone you cried. So. Landis looked at me and she was like, what is going on? I'm yeah. Like, just that good? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, yeah, we've had a lot go on between season one and season two. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. Lexi's talking about, like, I mean, professionally and personally, too. Mm -hmm. We both had to change our meds in some way, you know, whether, you know, and that means so many different things because it could be increase, decrease, onboarding, deboarding, whatever the fuck boarding. Just little baddies getting on a new one. I got to get off an old one. Yep. But, yeah. and But we found one thing that made us both happy throughout all the misery that is medication changes. Yes. Which was Ted Lasso. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this introduced me to, or was one of the many who introduced me. And finally, I was like, okay, I'll watch it, whatever. Mm-hmm. And like most other people, I was hooked after like episode one. I had to warn my roommates, like, if you hear me chuckling upstairs, it's because I'm just laughing at this TV show. <laughs> and they were like, I thought you were doing, like, you're, I thought you were getting off of one of your meds. I was like, I am, but it's just so funny. So right. we definitely like clung to that show. Whenever we were doing med changes mm-hmm. and, you know, then that inspired us to kind of bring it into the podcast. Yeah. We're like, you know, why not bring some serotonin in? So, and what Lex is talking about too is that she came up with this idea. It's a great idea where we title each of our episodes a Ted Lasso quote that we like. So if you might have noticed um, today's episode, Be a Goldfish with Jeff Parent, um is a line from Ted Lasso and 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 Lexi was like wait what was this and I was like you know this is so perfect for people with epilepsy right of course I forgot because I was doing it during a med change so I was like Landis yeah I mean and that's also too like in fairness I've watched Ted Lasso probably like seasons one and two I think three times so Mm -hmm. you know it's cemented into my head but be a goldfish um you know is all about letting yourself let go of the you know the bad things that have happened and maybe even the good things happen be present um you know just so because apparently the happiest animal on earth according to ted lasso is a goldfish and um i get a kick out of it because i'm like well then aren't all people with epilepsy goldfish because we can't remember shit so (laughs) (laughs) we should Uh, but then there's like well we should be the happiest people on earth but, you know, there's always roadblocks to that. But it does fit yeah. Jeff's episode. It does. Because, I mean, he's just like, because he's like one of those people that's just in the present, you know, and yeah. just really, uh, he just has such a soothing tone to him. Yes, he's just such a gentle person to talk to. Yeah. And, you know, he's got these big titles of being, yeah. you know, CEO of the, you know, Gulf Shores um, Toyota. You know, Toyota. Yeah. And also he's, you know, chairman of the board at the National Epilepsy Foundation. And so going into this, you know, episode, we're kind of like a little nervous. And we're definitely nervous. A minute into it, we're like, oh, he is so easy to talk to. And just like by the end, I mean, yeah, he had us cheering up and just it was it was such a special episode. I know we say that all the time, but this one was really cool because he really emphasized how important it is to be vulnerable mm-hmm. in you know his professional and his private life and yeah, you know I, I definitely took that. that with me and I was like this year my word is vulnerability and even in the few weeks since we've talked to him I'm like oh, this is following me I love it I've seen you do it too you're mm-hmm. like okay Jeff Parent you're vulnerability <laughs> I'm doing it like exactly it's so yeah thank you Jeff I- <laughs> 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 oh, uh, so we hope you guys enjoy this episode as much as we as much as we do um 
And as you can see, we've got some other changes too. We're on YouTube if you're watching mm -hmm. us. I say as you can see. If you're listening on audio, you can't see. But we are on YouTube, and hi, if uh, you're, you know, tuning in. Uh, we also have an Instagram account, so we'd love for you to follow that. It's just what the – no, I almost said what the fuck podcast. It's not <laughs> what the fuck podcast. <laughs> Sometimes uh, we call it that when it's just uh, her and I. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the What the F podcast. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Um, and if you follow us and want to, like, DM us with questions or, you know, comments or anything, we would love that. Yeah, we and eat that up. We love it. I know. It really is the fuel that keeps us going. And thank you to everyone who sent us mm -hmm. a kind message. It just helps us, like, keep doing this work, which we yeah. love. Um. Also, if you subscribe to our newsletter, which is through our website at mm -hmm. whatthefpodcast.com, um, you get discounts on epilepsy merch, which is pretty dope. And then also, um, you'll just get notified when our episodes are coming out. Yeah, we don't... which is kind of a nice, even for me, I mean, obviously, I know it comes out every, you know... Every Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah, but... Yeah, the season... Yeah, but even for me, it's nice, you know, as an epileptic who's on drugs, it is just nice to get the little reminder and be like, oh, right, duh, okay, solid. Yeah. My this podcast comes out today. is coming yeah. out today. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yes, it's a nice reminder. We're also, yeah, trying to help people out there who struggle with their memory, so. Yeah, yeah, and we don't do any of the annoying emails or yeah. give your emails to anyone else, so, because mm -hmm. we hate that. So, <laughs> um, but before we uh, log in to our episode with Jeff, we really just want to give a shout out to our sponsors um, because without, I mean, they're just, they're companies that we name, but there's people that we work with and the people that we work mm -hmm. with at these companies are absolutely wonderful. And we are so grateful for both of these companies for believing in our dream and believing in us and being wonderful to work with. Uh, the first one is SK Life Science. So thank you guys. Thank you, team. We appreciate you. And the other one is Norellis. And thank you again so much because mm -hmm. truly it's just like, um, I think I didn't realize how important it is. Like, you know, you always say like, oh, believing in someone is blah, 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 blah. And it seems cliche and blah. But then when someone really does and shows it, it, it does propel you forward. And yeah. it does make things happen. So yeah, and we're they were with really... us from the beginning when yes. we had nothing. Yes. and they truly believed with you know believed in us, and they continue to do so. And yeah. we, I mean, can't even put it into words, but totally you know, appreciate them beyond belief. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Okay, guys. Well, we really hope you enjoy this episode with Jeff, and we encourage everyone to just go out and be a goldfish. Hi, everyone. Welcome to What the F. We are so stoked about our guest today, Jeff Parent. I'm going to do a quick intro before I ask Jeff to uh, get started. Jeff is the president of the Gulf States of Toyota. No big deal. He is also the president of the board of directors for the Epilepsy Foundation of America. Again, no big deal. He is a president president. So we are very excited to have you here, Jeff. Thank you so much. Uh, if you wouldn't mind just, you know, starting us off with, you know, how epilepsy has been in your life and what that looked like from the beginning, because it's a very unique story. Yeah. So it, I've been living with epilepsy in my family my entire life. Um, so my dad had a seizure when he was in the Air Force in 1962, I think. Um, which washed him out of the Air Force. Uh, and and honestly, it was something that, that we didn't really talk much about. I mean, I remember when I, uh, probably in 1971 or 72 is when I first started having my own kind of obstacle seizures. Okay. And that's when he kind of told me the story of kind of what happened to him. Oh, um, so which in like a way a, was like, yeah, which yeah. is way we're like super fortunate, right? That your dad yeah. kind of knows from his experience kind of what this is and what it's about. Um, which was a real blessing, right? And in and, and a lot of ways, and I want to get to some of those soon. But um, so, it, it, you know, when I was, I think, seven or eight, I started having these absence seizures and they were, um, it, it just, you know, this whole thing felt like I was floating, didn't know where I was, kind of spaced out, sit on the couch. Um, they put me on um, a medication. I can't remember what it was called, but it was 
Um, it controlled the seizures, but it also like totally and completely ruined my teeth because it was like, it has this effect of rotting, rotting the enamel on your teeth. It was really. Oh terrible. gosh. I had, like, yeah. When I was like nine years old, I had like six or seven, um, root canals. By the time I was probably 10 or 11, I was off the medication. They'd done, you know, um, EEG, same thing, thing fine. And I went about my life. It was like totally kind of normal high school, no big deal. Got to college, first year of college, nothing happened. And then sophomore year in college, it was, uh, someone pulled an alarm at uh, like a Tuesday night at two o'clock in the morning in, in the dorm. Sounds because like people, were, because people are idiots, thing. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah people and, are idiots. Yeah. People are idiots. It's, freaking, it's Vermont. It's like two degrees outside. Oh, so God. everyone everyone trundles outside. And the last thing I remember seeing, because anytime the fire alarm was pulled, the you know the fire trucks would come and the rescue squad mm -hmm. would come. And the last thing I remember seeing was like the blinking lights on top of um, one of the fire trucks. Mm -hmm. And I woke up in the emergency room of the hospital, like mm -hmm. I had had a grand mal seizure. Uh, my friends, just to give you an idea what kind of person I was in college, thought I was joking and were like, get up, you idiot. Get up, you dummy. Like, just so then then the, the rescue squad comes over like, no, dude, like, this is he's having a <laughs> like, thank you. Thank God so, we're professional. <laughs> right. yeah. So like I, I, I wake up in the emergency room and um, all, like my five best friends are there, like looking at me like they went to the hospital, followed me to the hospital. I think oh. probably because they felt guilty for like acting like I was kidding. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, like they were, but they were, um, they were, you know, they, they were there. I talked to my mom that night. My, the, the beauty of this was that, that the story for me is like, I was lucky. My friends understood. They didn't ever treat me different. They didn't make me feel different. Wow. Um, and part of that was, I think, cause my dad and my mom had always kind of impressed that upon me. It's like, this is not a, you know, you can, you can live with this. And it's mm -hmm. something that you live with when you're a kid. Yeah. I didn't, I wish it didn't come back, but it did. Um, yes. I did the stupid things in college, like I'm up late and I have to wake up early in the morning. But I'm drowsy in the morning anyway, and I, I don't want to take my medicine. And like, you know, I never had another seizure while I was at college, but I, in the summertime, I'd like, I had one the next summer. All, always the same excuse, right? It's always early morning. I'm always overtired and I always forget to take my medicine. Oh. So at some point you're like, don't yeah. be an idiot. <laughs> take your medicine. <laughs> that, that was like probably 27 before it really sunk in. Like, oh yeah, now I can, I can, you know, that might be good yeah. for me to get my rest. Um, I was with my mom last night and she offered me a glass of wine and I was like, no, I'm good. And she's like, whoa, the tables have finally turned. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I won't do the college stuff anymore to you. No worries. But I mean, I definitely did that. And I was like, I don't, I don't care. So, so, so then, you know, I live, I, 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 I live with it. Nothing's happened. I had, so we had three kids, no seizures. And, um, then I had one more and it was another thing with me is if I, if I'm taking any sort of antibiotic, it lowers my threshold. Mm -hmm. So I had it in a hotel lobby after a, a big event my wife was running. And, mm -hmm. um, but then again, I was seizure free after that. Um, I had taken my medication that time. It was just the, the antibiotic thing that got me. Mm -hmm. So I lived with it for 15 years and I never thought about it. I, I just took my medicine religiously and I never even considered that this was, a, this was impacting me in any real way. Mm -hmm. um, and then both of my older children had absence seizures when oh. we were living. We were actually living in Canada at the time. And, um, and so had them tested, but both of them successfully got off the medication by the time they'd, probably when they were, juniors in high school, maybe sophomores in high wow. school. Um, and, um, my son still no problems. My daughter had a seizure when she was in college freshman year. Yeah. And that's when I, when I finally said, okay, well maybe this is a sign that I should do more than just live with this thing. Mm -hmm. It's easy for me and hard for others. Um, unlike me, she had friends that kind of were like, didn't want to travel with her anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. she had another seizure. Um, she's been controlled now for four and a half years. So that's great news. Wow. Um, that's wonderful. Um, yeah. But that was what got me back into the idea that there's something, I, you know, listen, I've been, I've been so incredibly fortunate to be surrounded by the people I was surrounded with that never let me get down on myself. Didn't let me think I was different. Um, always told me that, you know, you can, that this is not, this is not something that's going to have to, you know, negatively impact the way you live. 
So I'm really, really lucky. And I want to pat that to me is the thing that, that I want to do is to pass along to people that like people like me who are stop staying in the closet, get out and talk about this with other people. There are so many people that mm -hmm. when they find out that I'm on the, that, uh, that I'm the chairman of the board of the epilepsy foundation, there's so many people when I talk to them, I'm like, you know, my cousin, my wife, my brother-in-law, the, it's like, yeah. there's the silent majority of people out there that I just want them to, you know, raise their voices and stop, they stop making it feel like people, um, you have to hide this. You don't mm -hmm. have to hide it. Totally. Um, and that to me is like, if I learn one thing, that's, that's really what, um, I want to be able to, my legacy should be that other people like me feel like they can share this with their friends and their family and their coworkers. Um, mm -hmm. and that, um, you can live a full life, right? The, yeah. The, the hiding is the hard part. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I know, totally. and I know I felt like this too. I, there were times in my life where I felt like I'm applying for a job and they're going to do a drug test, right? Because you're worried like, uh oh, they're going to think I'm like some kind of, I'm, I'm addicted to some like really crappy prescription medication. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, can't totally. even a, like... I can't even get a cool prescription. It's like a, a, a totally, you know, terrible prescription to be addicted to. But like, I, so you always kind of question yourself. Do I put that in there? Do I not put that in there? Mm-hmm. Do I want them? To, I work for a car company. Do I they give me a company car? Do they want? Would they want to know this? You know, the yeah, answer, right? yeah. I mean, but guess what? Every car company I've been at, they fig they figured it out. They've mm -hmm. found a way to make to the the times that you know years later. So this is like five or six years ago. I had pneumonia. I was coming back from a big trip, and I had um, I was on antibiotics again, and I had another seizure. So this was now it's it had been. 15 years since my last seizure, oh, wow. 16 years. Yeah. My little, my daughter, my youngest daughter was home. She was terrified, thought I was dying. Um, and so I go to the new neurologist, puts me on different medication for some reason. Um, and then six months later, I had another seizure when I was out running. So mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. my wife gets a phone yeah, call are... from the hospital. I fell in the road. Yes. Uh, oh, God. Right? I'm so sorry, um, Jeff. That's awful. Anyway, so. Long story yeah. short, back to the back to the original medication because that obviously worked for a long time and I'm seizure free for a while now. But um, you know, my company understood. The people that work with me understood. I had to somebody had to drive me back and forth to work for, yeah. you know, whatever it was, three months. Um and uh and my wife had to drive me everywhere, which is no mm -hmm. fun for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean so you know, but you can it, you can live a life with this. Mm -hmm. Um so to me, that's what this is really all about. It's about coming out of the closet and telling people that, hey, it's okay. And you share this with a lot of other folks. And that's why I'm so proud of what you guys are doing. I think oh, it's thank so, you. It's so courageous. It really is. Thanks. Well, it's so, you know, it's so funny, like how you said, you mentioned, um, you know, you when you bring it up to other people, like I was just at a party uh, over the weekend and mentioning this podcast and what I do. And I, and I found like five people who are either like, uh, you know, my best friend has it, mm -hmm. my daughter has it, you know, and it was just like, and, and it's just this thing where they're like, oh my God, like you too. And it's like, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. There's so many of us out there. We need to keep doing this and having these conversations, which is why we, you know, do this podcast. But what I keep hearing from you um, is how, you know, is surrounding yourself because like a lot of workplaces would not accommodate that, mm -hmm. um, you know. Um, I know we and both experienced that for sure. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, I have. Um, and like a lot of, um, you know, people don't experience having friends like as you saw with your mm -hmm. daughter that, that stay that stay by you. You know, mm -hmm. so like you seem to figure out how to find the the people that will that will be there and who mm -hmm. who will, might maybe don't get it. But like I understand what you need in order for you to keep going, mm -hmm. and that is just pretty dope like <laughs> because it's not an easy thing to do and i think it's one of the things you know i just got a, a, D, a text message from a friend who was like yeah this guy wouldn't go out with me because i don't drink a lot because of my epilepsy you know and mm -hmm. it's like yep you know you run into these you know and like well that guy is no good anyway you know whatever but um, it it still is it's just like hitting these roadblocks over mm -hmm. and over. Yeah. A lot it, of it is just other people. You mm -hmm. know, it's like <laughs> yeah. you yourself have to, you know, really kind of um, 
come to terms with it and choose to go forward with it. And then a lot of the struggle is truly just everyone else in the world. Just, yeah, like you said, putting up roadblocks in mm -hmm. front of you and you're just like, get the fuck out of my way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm doing this on my own. I'm fine. You're just making it way harder. The rest of the world is just making it harder for us. So, I mean, that is truly, yeah, just surrounding yourself with people who aren't going to do that yeah. to you, like you said. Who yeah, and, and I mean, I, you. I have some friends like they, I'm the master of the Irish goodbye, right? I'm the master of a guy like... <laughs> We were just talking about and, this with Landis yeah, last they're week. Just like, did, what happened to him? Where'd he go? It's like, mm -hmm. I'm in bed. Like, I'm, <laughs> I may not have said goodbye, but I'm, I'm in bed. Like, yeah. I'm, um, yeah, it was with my mom's 80th birthday last week. And, um, we're staying at a house, um, kind of in Chatham, Massachusetts, have all the grandkids over and like 20 people is great. So it's like, it's you know, fun. the day starts out with a surprise party for her at 2.30. Then it's like 1030 and people have been like boozing it up all day long. Yeah. And having a great time, right? A lot of fun. Everyone's laughing. And I'm kind of like sneaking up the stairs to go to bed. <laughs> and they caught me. Yes. They caught me. Oh. Like, like, Sorry, I'm out. Like, that's just, I got to get my, I got to get my rest. Yeah. yeah. That happened yeah. to me at a party last week. I was like, oh. Same. Kind of looking at my watch going, I need to go to bed, but, um. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. how can well, I get and away? I think sometimes too, you get wrote like the party I was just referring to. Like I, you know, I said, okay, I'm leaving at it start four. I am leaving at mm -hmm. seven. That is when mm -hmm. I am leaving. That is when I'm going home. And it was so much fun. Yeah, and exactly. I didn't want to leave, right? And I didn't want to do the Irish goodbye. And you know, and so I think that's also part of the struggle is that it's like it's. It's not always the fun thing to do to take no, care of yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. To constantly just like parent yourself. And yeah, that's not totally. fun. Totally. No, it's never and really. I, it, it, it's harder. It's easier now, honestly. That I've gotten to be like, you know, I'm, I'm of an age where you shouldn't really be staying up drinking until three o'clock at night. Right? <laughs> Sorry. It's not wise for a number of reasons. Um, but it was much, I will tell you, it was much harder when I was like 30, 28. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. everybody's just like, oh, we'll stay up all night long. And you're like, I can't yeah. do that. Like, that's yeah. just not going to work for me. And totally. it was harder for me then. That's why, that's why I did dumb things, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's why, well, I have to wake up early tomorrow, so I shouldn't take my medicine because it's harder for me to wake up. Yep. Yeah, that's like, it's like eight things you shouldn't do in one sentence. Like, first of all, those things. Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. like, definitely take yeah. your medication. <laughs> and then don't wake up early. Like, those are the things like. You know, yep. <laughs> about, like this is the dumbest thing you can possibly do which i did like two or three or four times so yeah but, kind of gotta like look at your week and like pick and choose what you want to do and be like oh shit mm -hmm. okay if i'm gonna do this you know a and b i have to ditch c and i have yeah. to yeah. you know prioritize sleep and eating mm -hmm. well and blah 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 on these nights and it's kind of like oh shit i want to do all of these but i know i won't make it through the whole week if i do everything and i'll feel even worse next week yep so yeah, it's just constantly doing that. I just call myself the, you know, grandma of the group. I'm already planning like this week. So I have to go. I'm flying away right after we're done here. I'm flying up to Dallas. I'm meeting in Dallas for two days. Then I'm taking a late flight out of Dallas to get to the East Coast because my friend from college's dad passed away. I'm sorry. And I'm already planning like, okay, I got to sleep on the plane before I get there. Make sure I get a couple hours of sleep on the plane. Um and then get to sleep as soon as I get to the hotel so I can wake up in the morning to drive to the funeral. And it's just like you're planning the whole weekend. It's like, this is exhausting. If I didn't have this to worry about, I could just kind of like wing it. Right. right. But, like yeah. everyone else does. Everyone's right. like, I'm very spontaneous. I'm like, I would love to be fucking spontaneous. Mm -hmm. I cannot be spontaneous. <laughs> right. Yeah. Without yes. ruining the weekend, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Right. Yeah, right. it, yeah. Well, you know, we will be sending you our best wishes on that because it's, we know the stress of planning the rest and planning the sleep. We'll, we'll, I'll be. I think I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm pretty yeah. sure I'll be okay. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, well, you, you already like, have. I mean, that's the thing. You know, you've already planned it out. You've already figured mm -hmm. it out. Yeah. And Lexi and I talk about it all the time how like we plan so far in advance just because mm -hmm. of you just don't know and you need to. What do you guys do? Can you guys like we when you travel like mm -hmm. out of the country or someplace? Do you ever go out of the country? I haven't in I've a long time. Twice I, not since I have had have had epilepsy. I have yeah, as early like right after I was diagnosed, and 
those were just so hard because the time change. And then it's like, what if I get stuck there and I don't have my medicine? Blah, 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 blah. blah. And all those things just start to like, you know, Mm -hmm. the laundry list of worries start to add up. But we'll see. Now, I mean, now I'm almost two years seizure free. Um, Good so maybe you. I'll start to explore that. But when I wasn't, I was like, uh, uh-uh, nope, I'm staying in the country. I'm not leaving Colorado. I can't do it. I can't leave my safety net. Um, and my parents would probably have a heart attack. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because we used to have when I, the phenobarbital that I'm on in Texas, they would only fill you 30 days at a time. Yeah. It's a controlled substance. Right. So you are constantly like, and I travel a lot for work. Let me travel a lot mm-hmm. for work personally. And, but you're, you're, you're thinking like, okay. When do I have to get this refilled if I'm out of the, yes. they only refill it with like three days left. And I'm like, yes. I got to figure all this out. And then you find yourself, oh crap, I didn't get it. And then you're trying to get a hook, like you're, you're in uh, the wrong state. Yep. Great pharmacy, but the pharmacy won't fill it for you. It's just like. Yeah, you know, getting a pharmacist to oh give God. you like, like yeah. three, which yeah. makes you <laughs> not mm-hmm. sound good. You know, like, yes, I, I get it. Yeah, it drives me nuts. That, yeah. that really is like. And now the good news is they just went to 90 days. So I feel like oh, I've got like good. all this cushion in my life now. I'm like, oh, good. I get <laughs> yeah, right. The 90 totally. days is nice. Yeah, it is. I, like, <laughs> I mean, so I'm, I'm much better off than I was like, a, but a year ago, I was, I, that was when I like, I constantly worry about that. And like, yeah. that's the place where I can get my meds. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. It definitely makes me ner- nervous if I have to like travel around kind of like that almost refill era, mm-hmm. like time. And I'm like, but what if something goes wrong? Because there's been a million times where it has. And oh, then I'm yeah. like, well, then I'm screwed and I'm not going on the trip. So, no. Yeah. I like I, there was I was in Florida and they were like, we we don't have this. Like, oh, my gosh. To, yeah. Like it's it's an hour away. Mm-hmm. And thank God I had uh, friends that lived kind of an hour away. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we got there was so sweet. They're like, we got you. We'll get it. We'll pick it up. Blah, 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 blah. You know, but it was just that like. I didn't plan it very well and I wasn't really thinking and it was like, you can extend your stay in Florida. And I was like, well, yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and didn't look at my meds and was like, why don't you just bring the goddamn bottle? What is wrong with you? But Ooh. never make that mistake I again. I definitely feel like a drug dealer when I'm going through like the airports because yeah. I'm <laughs> so paranoid where I will put in all the extra bottles that I have and I will just yes. have a gallon size bag of everything I'm on. I'm like, I don't care. And I kind of pull it out and I'm like, Okay, please don't flag me. I just, you know, have yeah. epilepsy, no biggie, but it right. looks so sketchy. And I'm like, right. I'm bringing it all with me. <laughs> I always bring a bottle. I always bring yeah. a bottle in my briefcase. Mm-hmm. Regardless, like if I, and I, if I check, I, I always bring my pills. If I check a bag, it always goes in the, one of my carry on is. Yes. You yes. can't like, mm-hmm. you can't screw around with that. Right. Like, totally. No. Yeah. Other, other mistakes I've made have done that too. <laughs> Um, so there is a question, Alexi, and I wanted to ask you because we just, uh, and I'm sure you get this a lot, um, but it's something that we get that's always on our minds about like having kids Mm -hmm. because, you know, because like, like some people are like, I'm absolutely not having kids. I just don't want Mm -hmm. to pass this along. Um, was that ever like a conversation between you and your wife with the epilepsy being a factor? And so, knowing that your dad had it and that you have it. So I get it, but I'll, I'll broaden the story a little bit because okay. my, my, it. It my mother-in-law us. has it too. Really? Really. Wow. wow. Oh my, I've never yeah. heard yeah, this, this many so, generations. So my mother-in-law has it too. And it was definitely something that we talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, you know, you got to factor in, I, I'm controlled. Right. My dad was controlled. Her mom is controlled. So it's different than having um, some uncontrollable seizures that you, you, mm-hmm. you don't know what you can't. The medication doesn't work, whatever it is. We're we're in a place where we felt like we could live with it. Um, and and so thankfully, we were right about that. Um, I think if we had been if it had been different than that, if I felt like it couldn't be controlled, I don't mm-hmm. think I would have had kids. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think, and of course, like I say that thinking like, well, I'm, I'm obviously going to pass along exactly what I have to whoever is, you know, my kid, which is mm-hmm. of course nonsense. It could have been, it could have had uncontrolled seizures, but at the time it felt like, okay, if, if they have, if they end up having what I have, they're still going to be fine. Sure. Um, so I think if, if it had been otherwise, we probably would have, I, I would have felt differently about it. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I think it's hard. It's not just hard because you're worried they're going to 
have epilepsy. You're also trying to care for them and you have it. Yeah. Right. That's the other part that's hard. Yeah. I mean, we haven't done the kid thing yet. And the thought of balancing epilepsy and kids. Yeah. This poor thing is two days days seizure free. free. (laughs) So (laughs) So we are fresh off the boat. But the idea of also, you know, like maintaining everything that goes into, you know, keeping this out of the hospital Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, taking care of a whole nother life is just terrifying. And I mean, I know, you, you know, I only know a few other people, um, you know, who've openly talked about having kids with epilepsy and stuff, and they really depend on their partners and have extremely supportive partners and just like people yeah. that but, go above and beyond. But yeah, the thought of that is definitely slightly scary, I mean, even though I know I want kids. A hundred percent. I mean, I can't, I couldn't be, um, take part in the caregiving that a newborn baby requires because I had, yeah. epilepsy. I had, I was on medication. I was tired. I'd zonk out. Like you can't wake me up I'm like, mm-hmm. down for the count. Um, so a lot of pressure on my wife, right. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. that, um, and I, I just, I couldn't, I, I couldn't take part in, in that to the extent that, um, another person could. And so that's a tr- testament to, you know, how supportive she's been. Um, She's also a nurse, so she understands a little bit about this as well. Oh, but she's always she jackpot. Like, yeah, yeah she's also, <laughs> jackpot. Except for, like, she's always quizzing me. Like, like I've got got a bit of an allergy right now because we have a lot of we have a lot of pollen in the air. She's like, "What are you yeah. taking? What are you taking? <laughs> How are they going to react with you?" She's always like super worried oh that God. I'm going to do something dumb. <laughs> which you know. So right now, that's my mom for me. Yeah. But, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. So, but yeah, yeah, without, without, without a partner that can support that. And I, and the other thing is, listen, I mean, I'm the man, not the woman in the relationship. And no matter what, the woman has far more burden on them, especially in the first couple of years than the guy does. I mean, right. it's not even close. Yeah. Um, so I think if, if my wife had been the one that had epilepsy, we might, we, we maybe would have had a different conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just don't, you know, it's. It is. It kind of worked out the way it worked out, and it seems to have worked out okay so far. No. Yeah, and you say that with two of your three children having epilepsy, which I love hearing because then it's like, you know, it's it's like the thing that people are scared of, including ourselves, happened, Mm -hmm. but everything is still okay, right? You know, everything, yep. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying no. to take away from their experiences at all, but I'm saying like the thing happened and you guys are, you guys are thriving. No. Yeah. Well, it yeah, sounds like I you think... created like the environment that your dad created for you. Yeah. hundred percent. For yes, your children. A hundred percent. That's I mean, exactly right. That's uh, what, that's what, what I passed. Dream. I mean, it's, Gosh. it's the, um, yeah, it was a total, the, the gift of a lifetime that my dad gave me. Um, and to be able to provide, you know, to pass along to my kids is exactly what, um, I know exactly how they felt, you know, and, um, it's scary. And especially when your friends say they can't travel with you and those kind of things, but she always knew she could call me. Um, and she lives a yeah. full life and she's, you know, it's great. I mean, but it's a gift that, yeah, yeah. my dad passed to me and I passed to them. Mm-hmm. And hopefully now what is that? that? I hope they don't yeah. have to pass it again. Hopefully I mean, it sounds like them. you made it not scary to them. Yeah, so, well, I don't, you know, it, it's, you know, the funny thing about epilepsy is, I say this all the time, it's far scarier for other people than it is for us, right? Like, when I have a seizure, it's like, I don't know I'm having yeah. a seizure. I, I just wake just up. talking to my mom about <laughs> I, this I, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I wake up in like an ambulance and I'm feeling kind of like fuzzy and kind of nice and everything's cool and I have no short-term memory. And <laughs> you like, got the good drugs going through and it, you're like, oh, great. oh my think, God. What's the big deal? And then you go home and you realize like your 15-year-old daughter just watched you have a seizure and thought you were dying. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Like, that's the part that hurts. That's the part that breaks my heart. It's not what happens to me. Mm-hmm. It's like what effect it has on other people. So it, the seizure itself is always scary, scary for other people. It's never scary for me. Um, oh, yeah. When it's going, I barely know it's good. I mean, I don't know. I have no aura. I have no like sense that this is about to happen. It's mm-hmm. just like I'm doing one thing one minute and the next minute I'm in the hospital. Yep. Yeah. I Definitely. always look, like, I, I, I know people who have like this idea, oh, I'm about to get one. Like, and they can yeah. kind of put themselves in a safe place. I'm like, that would be great if I could, <laughs> like, if I had that. Like, but yeah. I don't. Well, I, I just, on you, Jeff. <laughs> 
You got yeah. that? I used to get like yeah. baby or it's like a split second. I'd have enough time to say kind of like a mental, oh shit, here uh, it comes. And then yeah. doop, there nothing. it went. I get nothing. Yeah. No warning at all. Oh. I get deja vu, which uh, that's what how they term it. But I, it's where I, I'm remembering something that never happened. So I am like, it's like when you're trying, like, and we all do this when you're like, oh, what's the name of that song? And it's like on the tip yeah. of your tongue, but it's a real song. Yeah. I am trying to remember the name of a song that does not exist, like, like, or a character from a movie or something like that. And like, I sometimes there's been so, times where I've been so sure afterwards that that character existed. Like I'm on Google and like, yeah. and no, no she's Mrs. Bitbinder is not real. <laughs> so um, that's so I'm like glad it taps into my creative side. Yeah. But anytime mm-hmm. I start, but it also freaks me out because then like when you start remembering maybe a dream, which is also kind of like mm-hmm. an intangible thing. I'm mm-hmm. like, am I having a seizure or am I just really remembering something? You know? Yeah. So it's kind of, but it is nice to have that the creative early warning system. Yeah. The creative mm-hmm. early warning at a time. Yeah. To kind of just get myself. So it's into it's funny. A couple of things you said, like the deja vu thing. That's what I described it like when I was a kid. When I was like oh, six wow. or seven or eight. I like okay. described this feeling like exactly what you're saying. Yeah. It's I feel like I've been here before. Like the same thing happened once before. My mom, well, it's like deja vu. And I'm like, yeah, but and I didn't a seven year old doesn't know what deja vu is. Right. Um but like that was the feeling I had. What I get, what what panics me is when I'm falling asleep, and you know you're on the edge of sleep and you're almost asleep and you're not quite asleep. I have this feeling like at any moment someone's gonna tap me on the shoulder and try to wake me up because I just had a seizure. Like I, mm-hmm. I live with it. At least happens at least once a week, yeah. where I'll be kind of drifting off to sleep in that weird zone between sleeping and not sleeping, and just yes. have this feeling like, oh my god, I'm gonna wake up in the hospital. Like, I yeah. just, like, it's this terror that I have. At least once a week, it happens to me. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mine is that I'm having one because mm-hmm. it's that in-between space. Yep. So mm-hmm. it's like, am I, and it wakes me up like, or am I having a seizure? But no, but like both are, I mean, that's, it's just, it's, yeah, it's terrifying. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's a fun Mine way to go Mine was always, what did I do during the seizure? Because I'm like, you know, always kind of like, I'm, I can still kind of communicate just way slower, yeah. but I will not remember it later. And so it's the, always that scary moment of asking whoever's around you, hey, if I have the balls to even, hey, what did I just do? You know, kind of like you're very vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And, but I want to know, like, what did I do? What did I say? You know, how'd it come off? And it was usually my parents. Um, and like you said, that's why they're always, you know, so terrified of, oh, yeah. you know, me doing stuff on my own, even talking to them yesterday and I was telling them like oh yeah I'm doing a med decrease this weekend they're like okay but just remember I respect what you want to do but I would love for you to go super slow on this and I I know it's just because they've seen the worst of it and they'd have those horrible memories and every time any change or anything comes up I can see it all over their faces that they're just like all those horrible hospital memories Mm -hmm. are popping up and but I didn't see anything I just felt the aftermath so I mean I'm sure it's just yeah, like it's hard. It, it's I mean, it it's got to be impossible to be um, not impossible. It's got to be so difficult, right? To to I know how my wife feels about it. Like she's just like she's doing this because she legitimately is concerned that something might happen. Yeah, and and so that makes me feel a little guilty. Like, oh yeah, yeah am, I, all, uh, am I doing this right? Yep. Like, and, mm-hmm. uh, and I, and of course, the guilt comes off as me being kind of pissed off at the whole thing and. It's never good, you know. You just one of those yep. things. You just no, like, I can you, relate it, to that. It, yeah, it's just it it it, it you have this yeah. feeling like you're not a hundred percent independent, right? Yeah, yep. But I think that that always is a difficult thing. Like I, I want to be a hundred percent independent, but like when I get on a paddleboard, my wife's like, I got to be able to see you, and I've got to be able to like someone. It would be preferable if someone else was out there with you, and you got to wear a life preserver and all this other stuff. Yeah. And I'm like. I don't really want to deal with all that stuff. Like, I mm-hmm. can't I just go on the paddle board and like hang out and, you know, basically yeah. paddle away for a while? No, you, you want to, don't swim alone. Those are kind of things that, yeah. you know, freak mm-hmm. freak people out. I mean, I get it. I totally understand it. it but it, yeah. it pisses me off. 
Oh, yeah, I'm free. So, oh, I feel like, especially with the paddle boarding, because like once you're out there, you're like, I just want to go forever. And it's like, no, no, as long as someone can see you. No, someone yeah. can see you. And you have the life vest. And you're like, I feel like a loser. No, uh, exactly totally. right. I, I want to be like Laird <laughs> Hamilton, like sweeping down the waves. And I'm not doing that. I'm yeah. on a flat water. <laughs> yes. just, you know, right. with a oh, like, preserver on like a dork. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm the same way. I'm like, why does he make me feel so dorky? I'm like, probably because it's bulky and like doesn't really fit and makes everything awkward. But right, yeah, exactly. that, that's that's exactly right. <laughs> I've, I've got it pretty easy though. Well, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's so funny because so many guests will say that they'll either say like, "I've got it easy," or "I'm very lucky," or "There's just so much gratitude." I've noticed in the epilepsy mm-hmm. community with what like the little bits that we get. And I think that's very, very cool because we all recognize that it could be harder and, Mm -hmm. you know, there could be a lot worse. And no matter how bad it is, I just feel like that's a common thread that we just keep seeing is like, but I'm lucky. And Mm -hmm. it's like, it's just, again, it just has me in like, you know, like you saying, like, I got it pretty easy after you just explained like how you planned out your travel itinerary after you leave this conversation you know, for sleep and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, that's not like, you know, quantum physics or something. However, it is more than the average person than those health, than the, you know, and Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know, it's very impressive for what it's worth. Yeah. I mean, one of the things we're we're trying to do, um, I think the frustrating thing that I get a lot from people who have it and it went through, it was definitely part of my journey when I switched medication, it was part of the journey my daughter was on. Um, and I hear it all the time is, you know, you have epilepsy and you really are sort of, um, and a lot of times you're, you're just sort of at the mercy of, of the, the care providers that are out there and whatever you happen to have near you. So, oh you know, the, the level of care you get at your general practitioner is totally different than a neurologist would give you. And it's totally different than an epileptologist would give you. And so yeah. what often happens is you get, you go on this journey and I, I know I have friends like this, that, that, you know, they, 10 years of trying medications that never worked and they had the surgery and then suddenly they're seizure free. Mm-hmm. And you're like, why does it take so long to get there? Why did, why did 10 years have to go by? Be right. And one of the things that we're thinking about and what I think about a lot that we can do as a foundation is, you know, it, you give it like if, if you went to your general practitioner and you had cancer, God forbid, but you did, you would go see an oncologist and probably an oncologist that specialized in the kind of cancer you had. Mm-hmm. You go to a GP, you go to a G, you go to a GP. Yeah. you you experienced that, right? Yep. yep. You go to, a, you go to a GP and you have epilepsy and they're like, they send you to a neurologist and the neurologist doesn't really know what to do with you. And they don't know what kind of epilepsy you have. And, and you go through this period where you're just basically, you know, trying out a cocktail of medications to see what's going to keep you out of the hospital. Yep. Um, and one of the things we want to be able to do is start to use patient data to say, hey, listen, for people that have these characteristics in common, the likely solution is this, th- these kind of, you know, therapeutic medications or surgery might be better and you get there sooner than you would if you hadn't tried, you know, 15 medications to try to get you there. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things I think we've got to be able to, as a community, is especially from the foundation standpoint, we've got to be able to start to use data to say, okay, this is, the, this is likely the therapy that's going to work for this type of person presenting mm-hmm. this type of epilepsy. Right. Um, and we're so far away from that because every story I hear, every story I hear is we tried eight different things or 12 different things and they never worked until yeah. they did or it never worked and I had surgery and I never had another seizure again. Yeah. Or I had surgery and I continued to have seizures. Right. Or and exactly. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. and it's, it seems it, it's, it's, you know, we, there's this huge breadth of types of seizures and types of epilepsy yet we're starting off with the same, <laughs> same yeah. meds yeah. for each type every time, even mm-hmm. though they're completely different. And it's like, this is maddening. Is. And I know they're doing the best they can. I'm, yeah. You know, but like you said, we need more data. We need mm-hmm. more. Uh, we need more out there. No, we noticed definitely. I mean, just within the community that almost just us as epileptics working together, sharing stories, we get more shit done than we would just like, you know, having a 
um, you know, epileptologists. And yet again, they do yep. amazing work. But having, you know, them, you know, come up with a um, plan for us because we get to share our own experiences, our mm-hmm. own diagnoses. And um, I mean, you know, we can kind of give each other tips and tricks and just say, yeah. well, you know, if you already experienced this before epilepsy, maybe try this med or, mm-hmm. you know, blah, 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 the list goes on. But, you know, I really feel that just you get a lot more done when epileptics kind of work together, even though it is, I mean, I know a lot, it is very exhausting to kind of mm-hmm. stay within this realm and this community after, you know, you gain control of your seizures because it is such a heavy community to be a part of. I mean, we're all, I mean, most of us are, you know, depressed and have mental health issues on these drugs and they cause a million different side effects and you're just like desperate for anything. So it Mm -hmm. is hard to kind of like remain a part of that. And it's an easy out once you gain control, but, um, it's really, you know, makes a huge difference when you stay within the community to like share your story Mm -hmm. and show that like, Hey, like, look at you. You're on the other side. You've, you know, got three kids now and I mean, obviously extremely successful. So, I mean, because a lot of us don't see that. That's what we have to do, though. We have to we we have to convince people that um, have it under control. Mm-hmm. Keep being part of the community and sharing their story. Because yeah. It's hopeful. It gives people hope. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I clung and, on to the few people that stayed within the community and, you know, who had their and, seizures under control. Yeah, and listen, I was I was the post poster boy for the guy who got out, right? I was like, okay, I'm done until my daughter has <laughs> and now I'm back. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. I'm staying back. I'm I'm gonna be part of this. It's part of my mission, right? I realized. And I think we've got to convince more people to do that because it it is um it reduces the stigma, which is mm-hmm. a super hard thing. The stigma yeah. part is is you know, it's not as simple as saying like, oh, it's like the scarlet letter and other people are gonna laugh at me. It's like, no, no, it comes with, it comes with that, but it also leads, it just doubles down on the depression and mm-hmm, doubles yep. down on everything else. The sense of otherness, yep. the sense that you don't belong that, um, you know, we've got to get to the point where we can have these conversations amongst a group of people and, and make each other feel good about it. Thank you. They feel better about it. Um, yes. I mean, talking to you guys mm-hmm. make me feel better. It makes me feel part of something. Right. And I, Listen, right I, I came to work this morning. I've had like five meetings so far. I'm getting on the plane. I'm having like two more meetings today. And I won't feel as part of any of that as I feel as part of the community when I talk to you two. Oh, that's really sure. powerful. Make you cry. Thank you. Well, no, that is powerful. And I think that's, I think to you, like both your points, like we learn most and we feel the most when we talk to other epileptic, mm-hmm. other people with epilepsy. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, Oh, what's so interesting too is how you're like, I'm out, I'm done, and like, I, I, like, I don't get it because I'm not out, I'm still mm-hmm. in it, but like, I can understand how you would do that, be like, and you know, mic drop, hi, mm-hmm. and then it affects yeah. someone you know very close to you. But that whole stigma part is like, I was at um in a, a, a another gathering, and I I was explaining the podcast, and someone said. Is there even stigma with Oh, epilepsy? God. Who? Cool. And I was like, hold me I back. Don't, I don't know how, how to watch the show here. Really. <laughs> how many times have you been in a room and someone faked a seizure and thought it was funny? Like, Jeez. I mean, just. Ugh. Yeah, I was like, I, well, um, and like I had nothing to say because I don't know where to start. <laughs> I was like, you know, maybe I'll just send you a pamphlet or I don't, yeah. I don't know what to do. I dare you to walk up is. to someone and say the word seizure or epilepsy and see how they react. Yeah. Like, take a couple steps back. Yeah. Well, listen, <laughs> if there was if there was no stigma, wouldn't people be out like talking about this all the time? Like have signs on and say, I'm an epileptic. I'm, you know, proud to be. They, we would be, the community would be out there going, look, I'm epileptic. Isn't that great? Yeah. Like they, there's, of course, there's yeah. a stigma about it. Yeah. People totally. are afraid. Well, I won't be able to drive and I won't be able to work and I won't be able to do this and I won't be able to do that. And I can't stay totally. up late. And like, but whatever it is, like, of course, there's a stigma about it. You want yeah. to make it feel like there shouldn't be, right? Yeah. It is just what it is. And yes. some of us can deal with it. And some of us are struggling to deal with it. And some of us, frankly, can't deal with it. And that's not their fault. They just, it's, it's not solvable. Totally. And that's, I think that's the part that, like, when you say it, you're like, that's the part I really want to fix is the people that, that you know, can't live. And you see a kid that has 20 or 30 or 50 seizures a day and you just, right. your heart breaks. Oh, yeah. 
And I want, I want it so much to help them and help their parents. And that's part of it. But mm-hmm. honestly, just as big a part of it for me is I want people that are feeling like they're, they're, they're othered or, you know, they're somehow on the outside looking in. I want them to feel part of something. Yeah. Right. I want them to, I want them to live a full life. Mm -hmm. Right. I get to do that. I'm happy to do that. I'm glad. Um, but I'm lucky, but I'm also, um, I'm also going to keep giving back. Yeah. Right. I'm also going to keep doing this. I'm not going to, this is not a thing where I'm going to be like, oh, three years from now I'm off the board and you never see me again. Mm-hmm. I'm going to hang around for a while. Um, Good. I believe and do you. Things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, my, you know, it's, I remember when my daughter first got diagnosed, we were living in Canada and there's an organization in Canada called, what was it called? Some lemonade stand thing for a, a child who had epilepsy. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he had a, he had, he had a situation where he, you know, he was having five or six seizures a day. Mm. Um, and I was so proud of my daughter. She, um, went to like every event that he had and became this like huge, and she still to this day, um, does every walk she can do, gives back to the community everywhere she can. Mm -hmm. It's like super important. I wear this bracelet, this one right here. And I never take, I never take it off. I shouldn't say I never take it off. I've had three of them. The first two broke. Um, and she, wow, that's a lot of wear and tear for her. She, yeah. And whenever, she, whenever I see her, she makes sure I have it on. She's 24 oh. now. Oh, that is so sweet. 24 so she's like, and doing she's that. in, she's in, she's not leaving either. Yeah. I love that. Way. But that, a huge part of that is also, you know, the community you put around her mm-hmm. and the, the voice you Absolutely. put behind having epilepsy. Absolutely. A lot of people don't have that. No, no you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And that's, that's the other thing we got to be, we got to, that's create. what we're here for. That's yeah. right. It's okay. You guys are doing this. <laughs> We're here for you. <laughs> that is, I'm, oh my I'm, God. Just, I'm wildly impressed by what you guys are doing. Uh, Jeff, we are so appreciative for you being here and, and sharing like not only your story, but like your feelings, you're just being very vulnerable with us. We, mm-hmm. we really appreciate that. One thing, I mean, I will tell you this about being vulnerable. Uh, it's the best thing you can do for yourself. Um mm-hmm. Yeah. I tell people this all the time and not in the context of epilepsy, but just in the context of how we manage a business. Like you've oh, got to well, learn to be yeah. vulnerable. It's the only way you're really going to learn and put yourself out there and understand that, you know, we all depend on other people, whether we like mm-hmm. it or not. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and learning to be vulnerable is a, a gift and more people should take advantage totally. of it, no matter if they have epilepsy or not. Um, cause we all have some shit, right? Yeah. Um, right. Would perfect. Right. Um, Everyone has a story. Everyone has yeah. something working. That's yeah. right. So I think um, I'm happy to be vulnerable with you guys and anybody else who listens to this. Thank you, Thank you oh, so much. This was we outstanding. really appreciate it. No, happy yeah. to do it, guys. And of course, we are still doing our epilepsy fave of the week. We've also added our epilepsy follower of the week. So we want to start off with... Um, and just, oh, just a reminder too, like the people uh, and businesses that we highlight on Epilepsy Fave of the Week, they do not pay us. They're not, this isn't like marketing. They're, this is usually us being creepsters and be like, hey, do you mind if we feature you? <laughs> because we think what you're doing <laughs> is awesome. Um, so if that applies to you, if you have a business or uh, resources as a person living with epilepsy, please reach out to us and subscribe to our newsletter so we can get in contact with you. Uh, our first epilepsy fave of the week of the season is Living Well with Epilepsy, who, which is run by Jessica Smith. It is an amazing place for resources, uh, personal stories, um, kind of like everything under the sun about epilepsy that you can find. And it's run by an, one of our sheroes, Jessica Smith. It's livingwellwithepilepsy.com. You literally go and search anything and you will find everything. I definitely recommend subscribing to her newsletter as well or the livingwellwithepilepsy.com newsletter just because, you, again, you just get great resources. Um, and then who is our, uh, who's our follower? Of the uh, our follower of the week is Nicole this week. Oh, that's right. Nicole sent us the sweetest DM on Insta uh, saying, 
um, after season one ended, it was like the Tuesday after, and she said, I missed you guys this AM. You became a part of my Tuesday routine. I'm looking forward to season two. May will be here soon. You're damn right, Nicole. May yeah. is here. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for sending us that message. Yes, thank you. Yeah, have a great week, you guys, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. See ya. Yeah.